This has been an extremely positive morning and afternoon, and the level of engagement has been tremendous, and it is nothing less than I would expect from a group of people who are so enthusiastic, focused, and above all, so passionate about what you do. I still feel that in many areas that there is, and, and sometimes it's out in the category we were talking about earlier, there's almost an inferiority complex about the, our food. We don't, not, we don't really believe how good it is. And, and often this has been reinforced by the way we buy and, and process things like meat and so on, because very often this, you know, the really good stock person, the person who's really looking off, you know, choosing and, uh, their animals and maybe some of the traditional breeds and, and all of that kind of doing a really better job. The, their cattle, there's very difficult, it's very, very difficult to actually find that meat eventually in what you shop, because it all goes can go into the, the great big meat uh, uh, processing uh, um, factories and uh, the abattoirs and it just it's not differentiated from anything else it's only the only way you're paid is on confirmation so we really need to we need to change that we need to reward people for making a, be a better effort and actually looking after their uh, animals or, or uh, producing a better product they need to get some kind of reward rather than just uh, 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 th so that's a very important thing but also I would love to see in Ireland. We have this incredible rivalry between each county well, in football and hurling and everything else. So I want the same thing in food. I want people from County Leash and Leitrim and Cork to be saying, well, in our county we have 20 or 60 uh, marvellous producers of this, that. We produce in our county, you know, uh, this cheese or that, whatever. And I'd love us to start thinking that way. And I mean, to, to have a summer school on food uh, this year is so wonderful because food is just as much a part of our culture as is poetry and art and everything else. So there's this, this, obviously it's a nation growing up, it's a, a realisation that this is something that is so much part of what we are as well. But I think one of the things that we need to do, I, I, I hate to use the term dumbing down, but there's a certain dumbing down which is endemic in Ireland, which is the idea where we sort of say, oh, it's all good. Um, you take a 16-year-old Italian kid, show him two pastas. One is industrially produced, the other is an artisanal product. There's no way he's going to tell you that the two are the same. He just won't do it. It's too deeply ingrained in his culture to make a point of differentiation. And I think we have to be happy for our kids to say, this piece of meat, you know, which is artisanally produced, is superior. I mean, both have their place, but the artisan pro pro product is, is worthy of its price and its respect and so on. So I think there's a, a key point about education, just as, a, just, just as a simple point that you allow people to kind of make that distinction. Don't be sort of saying, oh, it's all the same and, and we're all grand and, and it's all good. You have to recognize that, you know, organoleptic excellence in food, taste, flavor, texture, is a result of somebody's hard work and knowledge and that that's worthy of being rewarded. So I think within that area, if there's messages that can be put out there through whatever medium, um, then it's important. But, but, but as, a, as a principal thing, as an antidote to the information age, nothing teaches kids like about food like a visit to a farm. Mm. Nothing. I mean, the one thing somebody was saying, you know, what makes artisan food and, and what makes artisan cheeses and sausages and so on and so forth, the answer is these, you know? That's it, it's a handmade product. Once it loses that quality, it loses a great deal. Um, and I think when kids see a farm and they recognize the relationship of the farmer to the land, to the animals, to the produce, then a, a whole new vista opens up towards them. Everybody on the Taste Council, and I think everybody you know, in the audience, certainly anybody I know, knows the importance of education. We've been talking about it, we always talk about it. And in fact, we do more than that. As Doreen has said, the work that she's done, I know my own colleague Fiona, my brother Seamus, my next door neighbour, Porik, who owns the Forge Restaurant, go into schools off their own bat all the time and are delivering this, doing this. And that is fantastic, but it's not enough. It, we need, uh, Ruth pointed out, we need this cohesion. It's not just good enough that from our own goodwill and our own knowledge of how important it is, we can't just depend on that. We need, with respect, you know, Borbia to phone up the Department of Education and go, look, you need to do something about this because this is important to my marketing. I'm not going to be able to market our food without educating our young people about it, without educating properly our chefs. We need Marion in the Department of Agriculture to get on to the Department of Education to say, insist that we've got a programme that's rolled out 
to guarantee that we've got 100% of our schools with, uh, with, with uh, gardens. Yeah. So we, we're, you know, th there's a lot of people taking this on, but there needs, you know, it's, I think it's time that the stakeholders in terms of, of the larger bodies take it as, as seriously as it needs to be and actually, you know, do some, do some mm. proper action because it's something that will deliver tangible results mm. for our brand, for our food products, uh, for demand for those food products in the future, for the chefs that are going to cook it. it it's a very serious uh, issue. I mean, and again, related to that, people were sort of saying, you know, does something like Food Brand Ireland you know, threaten artisans as such, because it's a, it's a bigger kind of picture. But, uh, I mean, analogy I drew very quickly was just the idea of the three-masted ship. You've got your mainsail, you've got your jib, but you've also got your spinnaker. They all work together to kind of power the boat forward. And I think we agreed, really, that, you know, in, in, in relation to Food Brand Ireland, it, it is a remarkable opportunity, and it's a, it's a great opportunity to tell the stories coming from all sectors of the agriculture and to harness the goodwill towards Irish agriculture, which is out there for all of our benefit. And I think, I don't think anybody would disagree that the artisan, so-called artisan community, has been putting that investment in, you know, has, has punched above its weight, weight in terms of delivering um, the pluses on that brand side. But I think there's responsibility uh, among those other two parts of the ship, um, to start to deliver uh, positives in terms of the brand and not just get the benefits from it. Business is a tough game and marketing is, is um, a tough business as well. And basically what anybody in business uh, if, and in marketing, what they're looking for is the weakest link in their competitors, basically. And we mustn't be uh, lulled into imagining that they're not going to look out for the weakest link. And they'll go straight for it. And, uh, you know, we don't want headlines in Germany and France and Italy about some of the things that they can highlight that are not, uh, that are not actually really, um, uh, you know, fulfilling uh, what's expected from the brand image. And uh, we're only as good as our weakest link. And this would be something that I think it's something we can't just fudge around. We really have to look at this and be absolutely sure we've screwed down all the bolts and dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's on that before we spend a huge amount of money on developing this, what could be the most wonderful thing for Ireland, this brand Ireland image. The contribution that the, the artisan food sector, as it's now commonly known, uh, to the, the domestic economy in Ireland, as well as exports, uh, I think is being realised by, by more and more people. Uh, certainly it is by me. Uh, I mean, uh, in the last six months, I think I've met more small food companies than I have in the rest of my life put together. The point that gets reinforced in my mind all, the t all of the time, uh, the more work I do abroad to try and promote Irish food, uh, is that the actual... Um, the volume business, if you want to call it that, in terms of the, the sale of, of Irish beef or Irish dairy produce, is actually uh, enhanced in its efforts to actually grow its market by the artisan specialist sector. Because if, you're, if what you're at, which is what we're at, is to build a brand around Irish food, uh, around creating an image of a food island in Ireland, which is what Bordbia are trying to do, there are a number of things happening in your sector. Uh, one is, at a very basic level, people are setting up businesses, they're adding value to um, food production, uh, and they're employing people. Up to about 3,000 people in Ireland are employed in the artisan food sector. Uh, and they're making money for themselves uh, and developing a business doing something that they love doing. Um, but they are also doing more than that. They're creating an opportunity for a tourism trail to bring people to Ireland to taste food, to witness how cheese is made, to witness how, you know, all of the other things that are on many of your businesses and your farms uh, um, or in your restaurants. Um, there's all sorts of ways in, in which we can create the kind of economies of scale that are, are in other countries because of larger farms that are largely run in many cases by multinationals, in the case of South America. Um, we can do that in Ireland if we use our imagination uh, uh, and if we put in place business models that will work for Ireland and at the same time keep family farms intact, which we must do and is a big priority for me.